What kind of video card can you buy for $100 to play the most demanding games at high settings? And why you don't need an expensive video card, find out in this video. Live Games is back in touch, and today's video will focus on the GTX 1660T, I bought it for only $99, which is very profitable, given its performance, they sell them on EBOA for about $90 to $120. In my case, this is the version from Gigabyte D6. By the way, for the sake of comparison, there will also be a GTX 1070 in the test, which costs the same amount, in such videos, we usually start with the background of video cards, but there is nothing much to say here, we analyzed the history of Pascal and Turing in a recent video about GTX 1080 Ti vs RTX 2080 T, link in the description. But, nevertheless, I will briefly tell you what these 16 series is. In general, after the release of RTX 2000, users were a little shocked by the price tag, Moreover, there were only two games with tracing, and there was no wow effect there either. Among the users, a part of the audience quickly formed, which, well, did not give up all these traces of yours, it's better to give something for a moderate price tag, for which it will be possible to upgrade from the decrepit and infirm Pascal. Nvidia, of course, are not well sewn, they caught the request quickly, and presented the GTX 1660T at a price tag of $279. Having lost all the charms and features of the RTX series in the form of ray tracing and DLSS smoothing. In addition to the 1660 Ti, the series received two more younger sisters in the person of the GTX 1660 Super and the simple 1660. And also, later the GTX 1650 and 1650 Super were introduced. So, GTX 1660T, what was she like? The differences from the same GTX 1060 were a more powerful chip on the Turing architecture, as well as fast GDDR6 memory. The process technology has noticeably lost weight from 16 nanometers to 12 nanometers. The average gain from the GTX 1060 was an average of 25%, which is not bad considering about the same price. The card itself in our design is a budget option, two coolers, a simple radiator of the evaporation chamber type, one copper heat pipe, but to the credit of the manufacturer, all components are cooled, both memory in the VRM zone, and the budget here affects the temperatures, in the drain, the card warms up to 77 degrees, the hotspot flies away as much as 88 degrees. True, it's hot right now, but it's summer outside. With a downvolt of up to 875 millivolts and 1900 megahertz, it already turns out 71 degrees on average and 84 hotspot. The memory has accelerated to 1100 MHz, which seems impressive, but commonplace for GDDR6. As we have already said, for the sake of curiosity, let's compare the GTX 1660T with the GTX 1070, we are wondering what the difference between the cards in modern games will be. Our test stand is unchanged, and you can see it on the screen. Nothing limits our cards, the comparison is in ideal conditions. All tests are in 1080p. And let's start with synthetics, the superposition benchmark, GTX 1660T scored less than 1070, but let's see what happens in the games. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Ultra, the beginning of the test is promising, a noticeable advantage in the GTX 1660T, an advantage of 10 frames per second, or even higher, however, the further away, the difference decreases. The advantage of the more recent Turing remains, but by the end of the test, the cards are almost even, but according to the results, after all, the 1660T has 61 frames per second on average, and the 1070 has only 51. Atomic Heart Ultra, here the difference is already smaller, but it is more stable and clearer, it fits into 5 to 10 frames per second, tending to 5 frames per second. At 1660T it is 55 to 60 frames per second, at 1070 50 to 55 frames per second, while parity is not uncommon in the segment. Control. Ultra, the indicators are extremely close in this game, which is quite heavy for an average iron, the 1660T has an average of 50 frames per second, the 1070 has 45 frames per second. But without stators, everything is smooth, frame time is proof of that. CSGO. Minimal settings, but if you like to go for a ride in Kisachka, then do not worry, both cards give almost the same result. At 340 to 350 frames per second, this is enough for any monitor flyers. Cyberpunk 2077. High settings with AMD FSR quality, in 1080, there is parity. With a shaky leadership of either one or the second video card, we can say that the difference is on the verge of error. 
Both video accelerators produce 45 to 55 frames per second in different scenes. In 1440, a wider bus and a larger number of different CUDA cores and processors played a role, where 1660T fails up to 27 frames per second, 1070 withstands 33 frames. Where the 1660T has 35 frames per second, the 1070 has 40 frames per second, days gone. Ultra settings, the same can be said about this game. Here the difference of 5 frames per second is already on the 1660T side, it gives 65 to 70 frames per second, and 1070 only 60 to 65 frames per second, well, occasionally the difference is bigger. Dying Light 2. High settings, the 1060 on steroids again has a noticeable, though not fatal advantage, if the 1070 produces 40 to 45 frames per second, then the 1660T has 45 to 50 frames per second. Fortnite. Average settings, the first really noticeable breakaway is 1660T. At the landing we see 80 frames per second, when the 1070 has only 50 frames per second. On Earth, Turing has 90 frames per second, and Pascal has 60 to 70 frames per second. It looks like optimizing 1660 Ti for DirectX 12 still solves. God of War. Hi settings, here everything has rolled back to the margin of error again, albeit with an advantage of the 1660 T of 1 to 2 frames per second. Both cards give 55 frames per second. Hogwarts Legacy. High settings, we often observe parity, and as for the frame rate, around 45 frames per second. Although 1660T, admittedly, has 3 to 7 frames per second more. But along the frame line, the peaks of both cards are present firmly and clearly. Mafia Remake. High settings, there is a difference here again, but it does not catch the eye much. If the 1660T has 70 to 80 frames per second, then the 1070 has only 65 to 70 frames per second. PUBG. Minimal esports, well, as in the window, the advantage is clearly in the 1660T. However, the difference is not so big here, when landing on both maps, FPS is over 100 frames per second. And on Earth, both maps also have, well, over 150 frames per second. Eh, the tester will have to be locked up without food and water for a couple of days in the basement on a chain so that he can record identical segments. RDR2. Ultra with AMD FSR quality, a fairly noticeable difference was shown by the benchmark of the game, if 1070 produces 40 frames per second on average, then 1660T is already 60 frames per second with some fluctuations. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Ultra settings, in some places, the difference is on the verge of error, in some places it reaches 10 to 15 frames per second, and somewhere it stabilizes at 5 frames per second, it all depends on the scene and the number of objects. If we talk about specific figures, then 1660T has an average of 70 frames per second, 1070 has 65 frames per second. TLOU1. High settings, optimization, in our opinion, is still limping, at 1660T the counter shows 35 to 40 frames per second, and at 1070 30 to 35 frames per second. But you can play, statters are not particularly visible. Time to take stock. According to the expediency of buying a GTX 1070, we have already said in our last video about this card, it is a proud veteran, the purchase of which must be approached with caution, but it can justify itself. GTX 1660T is much fresher, her life has shaken her less, and you can take her safely. Relatively speaking, of course, because used is always a risk, the tests show that in most cases the GTX 1660T is more powerful than the GTX 1070, thanks to its architecture and faster memory. But not always, the hardware power of Pascal does not allow Turing to relax, sometimes pulling the results into a draw. And somewhere even surpassing, as in Cyberpunk in 1440p resolution. So what to take? 
All other things being equal, the simplified RTX 2060 is, of course, better, a little faster, a little colder, a little newer, consumes less energy. But yes, more expensive, and 2 gigabytes less memory. If you already have a GTX 1070 and you want to upgrade, then you need to look at something clearly more powerful than the GTX 1660T. So choose wisely. Well, that's it for us. If you liked the video, you are welcome, likes, comments, subscriptions, bells. See you again at Live Games.